All right. Hi, everybody. Hello. This is Kumbi and Laura. We're here for episode 13 of the Heartbeat to Go podcast, Challenges and Transformations. Today, we're going to be talking about Libra season and specifically um, relationships and reconnection and some of the themes around Libra. And we have officially made it one year through all of our challenges. Yeah. So it's really interesting. I think it's great that, you know, today we're going to talk a little bit about um, how we have sort of transformed or look at, looked at this challenge in a whole new way um, as opposed to last year where we were at. Yeah. So I think it's great to kind of like revisit these challenges and just see kind of what they bring up every time you take them, right? Yeah. Yeah. So um, how about we start out, Kumbi, do you want to give us a little bit of an overview on Libra season and some themes for Libra? Yes. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So Libra season, oh gosh, I'm just trying, I'm like still trying to catch up with the fact that it's Virgo season. <laughs> So, um, so yeah, so jumping ahead to Libra season, I know we have to record these earlier, but, um, yeah, Libra end of September, it's the beginning of the fall. It's the, it begins on the fall equinox. So, um, it's, it's a cardinal air sign, meaning like it's the initiatory. It's like kind of like that beginning type of energy of mm -hmm. like something new, something different, shifting into mm -hmm. um, a new season, shifting into this um, cardinal air. I mean, it's so interesting because air is like, air is meant, air is very much about the mind. Like if you think about the air element um, in Ayurveda, it is, um, it relates to the mind as far as like the thoughts moving in through your mind. Like think about your mind being like an air space, you know, mm -hmm. and that the, the thoughts going through are kind of like clouds or like debris. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, so, and it's, and it's quick moving and it's kind of, it's not super deep, you know, and it's very, um, like social, like if you want to personalize it, um, or, um, personify it into some sort of like, pers like, uh, you know, theme that has to do with us as like human beings and how we experience it. It's very social. It's very flighty. It's very airy as far as it can be very superficial. It can be kind of shallow. Um, but it's also about like the intellect and it's about um, communication and it's about all of these things that, um, that connect us to each other. So, uh, so Libra, the, the symbol for Libra is the scales. So it's it is about balance and it's about harmony and it's about maintaining this type of balance. And so it's really interesting because, um, the relationship theme relates to that sense of like balance and scales and that, um, you know, within a relationship, just within all relationships, um, one is affecting the other. Right. So there is that you know, really thinking about that like that, but then thinking about it in terms of, I feel like last year we talked about it as, um, your relationship with yourself. Mm -hmm. And I really feel like, yes, it's your relationship with yourself. It's your relationship with other people, but it's also finding the balance between your relationship with yourself and your relationship with other people, mm. you know? So it's like bringing in relationships, but also bringing in that element of balance as well. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so other Libra themes are like, you know, all have to do with relationships and balance and harmony. It has to do like diplomacy, um, has to do with like, you know, kind of like, um, like being able to see things from all perspectives. It's a very Gemini thing mm -hmm. too, but, um, but it's much more like harmonious, you know, yeah. it's about keeping the peace to a certain extent. Yeah. Would it, um, would the shadow of Libra then be like being out of balance? Sort Absolutely. Of like, yes. Like out of balance. Too focused on self or too focused on relationships? Yeah yeah. 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 Too focused on self. Yes, exactly. So out of balance in whatever way um, or seeing more of like one perspective or attaching more to one side of things than like really feeling like the balance of both. And then going along with like this idea of balance and harmony, like which is so interesting because the other, you know, side of Libra too, as far as these other themes are, are also about like aesthetic and about 
about beauty because it's ruled by the planet Venus. Mm. So it's very much about um, things that we find harmonious and peaceful and beautiful outside of ourselves, the things that we we perceive to be like in balance, like outside of ourselves. Mm. So um, so there is this like a kind of artistic, like creative, like um, aesthetic and like beautification that comes along with this harmonious and peaceful and balancing Libra energy too. Yeah. 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 That's great. Yeah. That's great. Um, and just to, you know, confirm this, we talk about relationships and reconnection challenge, which is our Libra challenge for this month. Um, this can be like we did last year. I think we both focused on self, right? We both focused on how this related to ourselves. Um, I had been single for like 10 years (laughs) (laughs) or a a while. Um, and I just, you know, this year, um, really opened up to starting to see, uh, other people. And I've, you know, been in a relationship for the last six months or so. Um, and so I looked at this now through the lens of relationship, totally different. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it totally brought up different things for me. Um, gosh, especially around intimacy (laughs) and some challenges around that and connection that way. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And how vulnerable that can feel, which almost feels like a little bit Libra too. Yes. Um, so, and we can talk a little bit more about this as well, just the challenge itself. Um, but also, um, you know, like how this can help us really like the themes of Libra, like how they relate to all of us at all times in our lives, like this idea of like connection. And I, I, um, personally have been working through some Libra themes with like my Aries, um, that specifically came up with, um, how to heal your heart. This is a astrology thing that I learned, um, through, uh, an astrologer online, but really healing based on your moon sign. Um, my moon sign being Aries, which is, can be very self-focused, but so she was saying to focus on the opposite, which is Libra, um, and really opening myself up more to like connection and, um, being around people and my natural inclination is to sort of focus on self. And so that I've been leaning into that more, which has been really helpful. So I just think that Libra is such a beautiful. For, yeah. Was that for um, like emotional healing or what was that you said? It was for, it just, she just she called it healing it, your heart. Healing your heart. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Cause that's where I tend to close off uh-huh. I, and I tend to just focus on myself or I tend to just sort of go into this little shell of like, well, I can just, be an independent person. I don't need to rely on anybody. Yeah. Like, and so that's, that is naturally how I tend to sort of protect myself yeah. from being hurt. Right. And, um, what this was saying is to really focus on themes, you know, opposite your moon sign, which mine would be Libra and to really f- open up, right. Mm-hmm. And focus on connecting with people and being in community and, being in relationship, whether that be friendships, um, reaching out to your friends, reaching out to your partner, mm-hmm. but needing to rely on people. Like we yeah. aren't just meant to do this on our own. So. Well, I can imagine like if you've been single for 10 years, like, yeah. I mean, I was just single for like nine months and then, and that was like, and that was a huge transition from just thinking about yourself and your life and what you want to do. And re- it's like that real like sense of freedom of like when you are single to, to making that big tr- shift in transition transition into being in relationship, especially like an intimate relationship. It's like, you, it's like you have to, it's re- like a real learning process. You right. know, I can imagine that being like, like for me, I remember it just being like, um, yeah, like thinking about something, somebody else and like maybe somebody else's schedule and somebody else's, um, needs that I'm not necessarily like, you know, feeling like I want to meet at the moment, you know, but like, yes, you have to step up and you have to do it because it's not just for, it's not just for the other person, but it's for the relationship. The relationship itself. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, That's so true. I think a hundred percent like, oh, I'm not just thinking about myself anymore. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But, um, also like, just the, the vulnerability of being in a relationship yeah. and like, especially the beginning of a relationship yeah. when you're like, you like somebody, but you don't know exactly how they feel about you. And mm. it's just like the, you know, initial conversations of like, how do you feel about me? How I feel about you and sort of yeah. taking the lead when you're not, um, certain, which is, yeah. what I'm, I'm really, uh, 
you know, leaning into now and just being more communicative in that regard. So yeah, yeah, it's it's a good challenge. It's a very good challenge. And you know, what really came up for me, I, um, when I did this again was this first day, you know, you look into eyes, look into eyes with love is the day one challenge. So it's basically like you look at yourself or you look into the eyes of your beloved or your partner, right? For five minutes. Did you do that? Not with my partner. Oh, no. okay. I was like, wow. <laughs> that feels that, that really intimate. <laughs> that would have been good. But um, you should no. just do it. Be like, listen, I have this challenge I need <laughs> to do. We've so, got to do yeah, it. So I have to do it. And I got to like let Kumbi know. So let me So just like sit. All you have to do is sit there and open your, keep your eyes open. Keep your eyes open. <laughs> <laughs> just look at my eyes. Just look at my eyes. Um, no, I just it's did good- it. I did it with myself, which, which was hard too. Yeah, it's hard. Um, it's harder than it seems. It's really hard. It really is. It's harder I know. than it seems. And, but, but the strange thing that started to come up was this like affirmation of, so you can just kind of like say things to yourself or just look at yourself. But for me, it was like, it's safe. Like I, I have to, I had to kept, keep reminding myself of the safety of mm. like intimacy yeah. and the safety of being loved and of giving love. Yeah. Um, t- yeah. To me, I didn't realize how unsafe I felt in certain ways. Yeah. 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 So, or just the fear coming up of like opening your heart again. I know. And it's interesting because you have to think about, you know, to really get to the bottom of that, you have to really delve back into when did you first feel unsafe? Mm. You know, when Mm -hmm. did you first emotionally feel unsafe? Because I think that feeling of unsafety, I think it like a little bit is normal and natural, but if it's really going to inhibit you from like connecting to somebody intimately, then, um, then there's obviously some healing. That still needs to happen. And the healing can only happen by really looking at the root of it. Yes. Right? Like where was there healing that needed to happen in the past that didn't fully happen? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I read somewhere where, um, yeah, like our, it, our, like it can be unprocessed grief that we're holding on to, which is why, which is what keeps us from moving on. So there's parts of that that I feel like I still need to look into in terms right. of what is it? Why is it the woman is who, re- is it that book? The, uh, Christina Pinkola Estes. Is it that book that talked about that? The unprocessed grief or where was oh, that from? I feel like I read it on, on, on Instagram somewhere. somewhere. Oh, Might've okay. been, um, Jillian Tarecki. Okay. I can't remember, but mm. it was somewhere online and it was, it just really hit me cause it felt like it's not, it, it's not about the other person because mm. I was married mm. and I, you know, you kind of like for so long, I w- was like looking at my ex as like the reason, which mm. there is, of course, a, a piece of that. But it's just the unprocessed grief of something mm. that kind of like keeps you from moving on, not necessarily the person mm-hmm. themselves. So mm-hmm. um, that was really interesting to me because. Yeah, it did. It's taken me a long time to be comfortable being in a relationship again. So, yeah. but also n- knowing I needed to do a lot of healing on, by myself. Yeah. And now I think I'm getting to the point where I feel like some of this other healing can only be done in relationship. Yeah. Right? Where that stuff can only come up when you're I love with that. another person. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Which is one of the main reasons of being in relationship, you know? So yeah, so you do as much healing on your own. And then when you're in relationship, you could really get an opportunity to heal with another person. Yes. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, I feel like I, (laughs) I feel like I just recently really experienced that where I was processing a heartbreak for a really long time, most of last year. And I was thinking, I was even at the point where I was like, I mean, I was just talking about this too. I was like, that was pretty much the longest, like most intense, like feelings that I really allowed myself to move through um, that had to do with like that sense of like heartbreak and grief, like ever in my life. And it was like, then the worst part of it was the feeling that you you were never going to get over it. (laughs) That's like the worst part. But then when you do get over it, you know, so like for me, like the piece that what got put into place of like me getting over it was actually meeting somebody new and having it that kind of, that was literally like the, um, you know, that was the thing that sealed the deal, you know, like as far as like, I really was able to move on from that previous heartbreak, but I don't know if I was able, if I would have been able to, if I hadn't done all of that processing on my own first, Exactly. you know, so, so it's, so for me, it's really interesting because, um, 
that new relationship really helped me like process the final tail end of like the grief of my old heartbreak. Mm -hmm. And then since the ending of that new one, it's all of a sudden has, um, that old, that same person in a different way has shown up and is really helping me process the grief of this recent that one. That is wild. Isn't that, that is crazy? So wild. <laughs> I am like, I know every, like, this is just uh, since a month since we recorded our last podcast. Like, so, so I just, it's like my, happened. I feel like the whole, my whole world is completely turned upside down and it completely, um, you know, it makes sense too because yeah. it's been in my, when I got my reading in June, when it was supposed to be my daughter's reading, but she actually gave me a reading. Um, it, it, that was what was going to be predicted to happen around that full moon in Aquarius. Really? Um, yeah, oh. like towards the end of the summer. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So that's wild. But it, but so, so that's what I'm saying as far as like being like. I don't think, I think that there's only so much you can do on your own as, but you have to do it. You have, you have to do to. the processing and the grieving on your own. But then. Yes, relationship does help you heal. It really does help you heal. And what I'm realizing being in relationship now is that I, I'm seeing the fruits of my labor, I guess, yes. in relationship because I'm showing up in a better way. Yes. I am not showing up as the person I used to be right. or having those old patterns or reactions. I mean, yes, of course, every so often, but I, can, I at least have the consciousness now of it. And I yeah. can like be like, okay, this is my stuff. Like, this is uh, like, don't be crazy right yeah. now, you know, and kind of talk myself through it or be super direct with him and uh -huh. be like, I'm thinking this, mm -hmm. I'm making it mean this about me, you know, and, and just have much more, um, direct conversation instead of just letting something fester inside of me and not even know that it's going on. You know what I mean? Yeah. But then it's just coming out through my actions. Right. So I feel like when you do this stuff on your own and then you're fine, when you're in the relationship, then you can actually see like how much it pays off. Right. And yeah. then you also have the opportunity to practice. To practice it. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I know. So yeah. That's great. Yeah. That is one of the benefits of being in a really like getting, well, well, it's just about conscious relationship. I think that yeah. you can have, I think that that's probably where most relationships break down is where you just like start to outgrow each other. But like, I think that you can have long-term relationships by continuing to have these like breakthroughs in consciousness with each other. Yes. So that was, a, that's one of the things that um I've always believed <laughs> is that I would rather like much rather have like consciousness breakthroughs and re fall in love with like the same person over and over again versus different people, like falling in love with different people, you know, over yes. again. That's like Esther Perel says, you know, I want to be married 10 different times or she says something like 20 different. I want to have 20 different marriages or I want to fall in love 20 different times, but I want it to be with the same person. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Which I think it's possible to do it that way or you can, you know, you have like a few way. different right. people. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. But I think, yeah, especially once you learn that maybe the hard way with, yeah. with somebody, then you can look for someone who is more conscious and who is wanting to heal yes. and, and do the healing together. So yeah, that's great. Right. Yeah, wow. totally. But yeah, yeah, you definitely have to show up doing your own work though Gosh. first. Yes. If you yes. don't do your own work before you really delve, or if you expect a relationship to heal you as far as you not doing any processing or work on your own, then you're just going to bring that grief and that unprocessed trauma or whatever that is into your relationship. Yeah. So I think there is definitely a balance in, in that as well. Like a relationship is not going to necessarily save you, but it will, it can help in your healing process. Right. 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 Exactly. I think a lot of people look for relationships to save them too. Save them. Yeah. yeah. And then once the honeymoon phase wears off, it's like, <laughs> Oh, yeah. I'm just with myself again. Exactly. You know, like, <laughs> nobody can save me from this. Or yeah. like all of my unprocessed grief is like now being like taken out on somebody else, you know, exactly. and like on the person that I love. Yes. Yeah. And I think this idea of like the one, like oh, I totally fell for that for a little bit. Like mm. there's one person out there, you know, like mm -hmm. a soulmate, a twin flame, whatever that might be, um, that there's that one person that's going to like you know, and everything's going to be perfect and it'll just be easy. Like I, I'm realizing that I don't necessarily believe that anymore. Like I mm. used to think, Oh, it'll just be like, it'll just no, you just know right away. Right. Mm. Um, 
and maybe, maybe that's some people's experience. Um, that has not been my experience <laughs> where it's like, you have to choose somebody like you consciously yeah. choose somebody that you get along with that shares the same values as you, that you have a similar vision for your life. Um, you have similar conflict resolution, like mm. important things that like you're, but, and you're choosing each other, right? Like right. not, it's, it's not necessarily just supposed to be easy or it's not going to be easy all the time. Right. Like yeah. I so. think to a certain extent we were all were sold on that narrative or that romantic story yeah. or that fairy tale story. Right. Um, but yeah, uh, hopefully, I mean, I'm hoping like my daughter's generation is not going to be, um, conditioned into thinking that. Yeah. Um, but because, but even though it's very romantic, but also it's like, what is our, um, what is, I don't know. What is our definition of romance? You know, um, that's something to think about as far as, um, you know, and that's like a whole Venus Libra thing mm -hmm. as well, as far as like, what do we like Venus is supposed to be the planet of romance, but what is romance? I mean, romance of like finding the one or like, it's kind of like that is like a fake romance. It's like a, based on some sort of fake story um, that doesn't, hasn't you know that pans out maybe for a very small percentage of people <laughs> yeah right like a fairy tale you know exactly like, yeah, like yeah. really but it can't be held as like the ideal anymore i feel no. like we've got we've finally we need to at least grow in that way as a society away from that um narrative and that story right um but um so yeah, so I think we've definitely all fallen into that. But then yes, this idea of, and then, and then, so the idea of romance is also this idea of like falling in love and what you were saying as far as like choosing somebody, it's like more also it's about, it's not about falling in love, like you're a victim to something, but it's like you are choosing love and right. that's so much more empowering. Right. And if we can maybe, um, consciously make know that that's a choice you know that yeah. we make yeah. and that that idea of like falling in love or even that free falling like like um you know that uh butterfly feeling of like you know thinking that you're falling in love is not really anything except for you know just like a feeling of like excitement or even anxiety or newness yeah you know that we're like you know romanticizing and like infantasizing about right. and and i think like that's fun and that's fine as, as long as you can take it as like fun and fine and light yeah. but when people start to really really take it super um seriously and yeah. prioritize everything they do off of like a fleeting feeling or a fleeting emotion, yeah. then that's when, um, yeah, then that's when you just start to stray from your true self, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and realizing that, like, I think we've talked about this before, but sometimes that's just like a trauma response when you have such yes. amazing chemistry with somebody. Yes. That's uh -huh. not necessarily a healthy thing. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Or when you're just, um, yeah, I know it's that intensity of that, like the feeling of like, um, you know, really, really, um, like desiring or like needing or like wanting somebody. It's like, it's like that super, super high type of a feeling. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I just think that just like with any type of like chemical thing in your brain or any type of drug that, that there, that there is that, but then you also know, like with that comes the other extreme as well. Yeah. So you can go into that consciously, I think, and still have like a great experience. Like I feel yeah. like my last experience was a very conscious experience mm -hmm. where I was like, Oh, I'm going to definitely lean into this. I'm gonna, okay. This is a little bit crazy, a little bit scary, but I'm going to lean into it. I'm going to lean into it. And I have to say that like, you know, just like a couple weeks out of. <laughs> like the very intense um, ending of that experience that I still feel like if I, you know, had to do it all over again, that I would probably do the same thing, you, you so? know, yeah. like it's like, it sounds so crazy, but it's like, ultimately, I mean, ultimately everything is always a great experience if you learn something from it. But ultimately it was like, it was literally like, 90% of that experience was so great and so fun and filled with like such great fun times and moments and adventure and like all these things, you know? Yeah. So, so the grief and the sadness comes from, you know, the intensity and the craziness of that, like really horrible 10%. Um, but also like the ending and like, you know, the loss of, the loss of the continuation of that type of experience. But, mm -hmm. uh, but, but it's just like anything that's like really intense. It was, it's like a short lived 
intensity. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. it needed to come crashing down at some point. It just, I just didn't realize it was going to be like such a so intense, intense, like crazy. Yeah. Um, but, but at the same time, considering how intensely high it was, you know, right. Right. Oh, that's so, interesting. But yeah, so that's kind of like, you know, how intensely do you, do you want to live your life? How intensely yeah. do you want to be open to right. life experiences? I mean, you know, some people can be like, you know, oh, that was a horrible experience and um, I wish that it had never happened or, um, you know, or fall into the victim mode of like, I didn't deserve that to happen to me, you know, that kind of a thing, which I completely understand, and especially if it was, um, you know, like a super crazy, like abusive situation or something. I would totally understand that. But that's totally, that's not my perspective. But that I also realize that's also not the way that I approach life. Yeah. So I have Jupiter and yeah. Aries, so I take a lot of risks. Yeah. Yeah, you do. <laughs> but it's super inspiring. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <imagine>? Yes. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, yeah. I mean, um, is there anything? I mean, this is this challenge is all about like partnership. Um, again, partnership, friendships, like taking a you know doing a workout with a friend, writing a love letter either to yourself or to um, you know your partner if you have one, taking yourself on a date, watching a sunset or a sunrise. So there's a lot of things to do with this one in terms of either pairing up or being in community with others, and then. Um, also, you know, some self-awareness around doing it for yourself, too. I remember last year I really struggled with, like, taking myself on a date. Oh, like, that's I don't, so funny. Yeah. So how has like, that been for you now? I mean, it's... Do you? Or no, you just go on dates. I just... Well, <laughs> we go on dates. Yeah. yeah. We go on dates a lot. Um, I wouldn't necessarily just take myself out to dinner and have, like, a glass of wine. I think I we talked about this yeah, on the yeah, last yeah, podcast. Yeah. But it's just, like, I wouldn't do something like that. Like, maybe I went to... Um, like the botanic gardens and would go hang out under a tree and read a book or something yeah, like that yeah. to me is like kind of taking myself out on a date. But, um, yeah, there's certain things that I wouldn't necessarily do mm -hmm. all that much, but, but it is super interesting to, you know, explore that a little bit more and be like, why wouldn't I do that? Why wouldn't I just, you know, yeah. go have a casual dinner by myself. And I think it is this, I, this vulnerability or something of just sitting at a table by yourself oh, having, you know, yeah. dinner. I was with a friend, um, not all that long ago and we were sitting outside having dinner and there was a guy there by himself and he wasn't on his phone, nothing, just enjoying his dinner, I drinking know. a glass of wine, uh -huh. like taking in the atmosphere. And it was, I mean, I was, I was like, isn't he uncomfortable? <laughs> like, wow. Isn't that funny? That yeah, is funny. That, so, oh, I thought that you would have like moved on from that since last year. I mean, I guess I just haven't thought about it too right, much. Right, right. But like, yeah, I, I never think to like just take myself out or like hmm. do a solo. Um, actually, I was talking with my partner about this, like a solo vacation. Oh. Um, because I know he's done that quite a bit. Yeah. And I, I know people that travel all the time by oh, themselves. Oh yeah, it's the best. And I've never done yeah, that. Yeah, you've never done that. Never, so. I know, yeah. I did that, um, when was the last time I did that? I know, so so since like, yeah, since I've been dating and stuff, I haven't really had that much time to like take myself out. Yeah. But like last year at this time, when I was um, when I was really really single, I was doing that a lot. I was doing that on a weekly basis. But and then and then and that's what happened last year. I did a solo trip. I did a few solo trips, but the most recent one was last December, which was actually a while ago. I'm trying to think if I did anything. I don't think I've done anything since. I feel like I have, but I remember the one last December. It was really nice. I went to this wine, uh, vineyard up in. Um, uh, up on the central coast near Paso Robles. And it wasn't meant to be um, a solo thing, but um, my friend was supposed to meet me there. But then there was a big snowstorm coming and she was driving up to Mammoth. And so she needed to like go leave early. And so we were going to just get refunds and cancel it, cancel it out. And I was like, let me, do I'd already blocked out the dates. I'd yeah. already, you know, gotten uh tiger schedule set. And, um, and so I was like, let me just go by myself. And it was, and it was great. Wow. It was really great. I got a massage. I, um, had wine. I ate dinner. I also did a lot of work though, which yeah. was great. You know, yeah. like I got the, some videos just done to for, be away. but yeah. it was just nice to like be away. It rained the whole time. So it wasn't like yeah, a, um, it wasn't like a, you know, 
like relax in the sun type of a thing. But, um, but yeah, if you get an opportunity to do that, at least I think that's, it's always, yeah. it's always good to do. I think too, just to like re-inspire yourself from a creative standpoint, Absolutely. like all the, all the things sometimes I, well, I've been feeling recently just needing like a reset mm. and traveling, like the travel bug has definitely been, mm. you know, kind of poking at me. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. maybe sometime soon I'll I do know. something. Yeah. I know. Yeah. We'll maybe, see. maybe you and your partner, right? <laughs> yeah. Take a trip. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> Depending on the so. cat situation. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, it's like I know somebody else who's going through a cat situation like that too. Yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's I tough. know. Animals it's are tough. a big responsibility. They are. Yeah. They are for sure. So, um anything else that you want to talk about with Libra or oh, the challenge? Um ugh, love letters, watching a sunset. Well, I definitely get a sunset in at least, you know, with the majority of the week. I saw you posted a sunset. I know. We went and saw a sunset the other night. It was so beautiful. Yeah. The way that the sky was lit was just gorgeous. It's like amazing. That's like my favorite thing. Yeah. And it's just, it's so amazing that it's just like there and it's free and it's like for us to watch. Yeah, exactly. It's like, that's what's so amazing. Um, The love letters, you know, I've been getting, uh, I got like a bunch of love letters from the previous, um, in my previous dating experience. And, um, and I love love letters. I think love letters are so great. They are. I know. I have a question. Yeah. Did he just write those to you without expressing those sentiments before? Or was it like, was it a brand new sentiment he was expressing through the love letter? Or no, no, no. Okay. I knew it was another way and a deeper way, a deeper and another way of expressing what he had already talked to me about. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it was just like another, which I think is so, is so great. You yeah. know, like hearing the same thing in a different way, especially in like a letter way, like this is, it feels kind of like old fashioned is like, I mean, it's totally worth it. Yeah. You know, it's like you can say, Oh, I already told you this, you know, but it's yeah. different yeah. than like getting it on like some stationery with like your, their oh, handwriting yeah. and like, you know, written down and like kind of like permanently set in stone as far as like, you yeah. know, you can always reread it and stuff yeah. like that is very different. Yeah. I miss that. Yeah. I haven't done that in a long time. Yes, <laughs> so I know. There is something really special about that. I know. Yeah. I feel like people underestimate the power of like just writing a letter. Writing a letter. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we don't do that much anymore. Well, right. I don't do that much. Or anymore, even but- just like writing a letter that you're never going to send. You know, like that's always mm-hmm. a really great practice. Yeah. Especially if you're trying to like cut a cord or like release some like or like do some forgiveness or do some sort of like releasing um, ceremony is to like really. Yeah. Like write a letter to somebody I don't know. Yeah. That you know you're not going to send. But just to like either get it out of your system or even like just sending something, somebody some love or maybe just sending some forgiveness or whatever it is, you know? Yeah. And then and the knowing that you're not going, going to send it gives you another level of like openness. Yes. Yeah. And then maybe you could send it. Plus, I feel like sometimes when you're writing, I like stuff that you wouldn't imagine comes out of you, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, I don't know. Sometimes just free write and it's like, wow, I didn't know that I was holding on to that. Or it's yeah. just so yeah, like putting pen to paper, I think can be really powerful to write it right. out. Right. Mm-hmm. And then I also there's like the the other side of it, which I recently found out that is a thing is that which I think is is it's like on social media and on just like online that um because there's like a some sort of because there's like a little bit of like a layer of separation and disconnection, there's like you sometimes people feel more empowered to even like say things that they wouldn't normally yes, say. Yes. Because you're sort of hiding behind exactly. this profile. It's yeah. like a hiding thing. Yeah. 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 So I know. I know. I think that um the one thing like the last thing that I really want to emphasize as far as like Libra and like relationships that I've starting to um that has like re inspired me um is is that we are experiencing so i'm reading like a few books that have just been all kind of feel like are are merging onto the same theme but this like we are we have we are experiencing the repercussions of um what 
some a lot of people say is like toxic individualism yes. you know yeah. so so there's this you know the separation between like us and like everything else like there's so much that we have strived in like the patriarchal culture and the materialistic culture and like the um you know the reductionist like theory of like how the objective world is like doesn't have any um um doesn't have like a consciousness you know and that we're just like moving around and um in our own separate like spaces as if like we don't have like as if we don't affect each other Mm -hmm. you know i think like now we're starting like the world is like showing us especially with covid and everything and all these other like pandemics and epidemics that are that are bound to happen with the environment everything Mm -hmm. is being shown to us that we are all so intricately intricately and deeply connected Mm -hmm. and not just to each other, but also to our environment and to the cosmos and to all of the things that are unseen. Mm -hmm. It's like the beginning of what Carl Jung used to talk about as far as um, like the animus mundi or the the feeling of like, and that's what astrology is based on, is like this idea that there's like a higher intelligence and consciousness out there too that is also being affected by the way that we're interacting with it. Mm -hmm. And so this idea of this like, I think that there needs to be like a real big shift and we can do it on our own like micro levels like with relationships and with our communities but there needs to be a big shift into like having this like broader perspective of all of us living all of us being like working together you know like thinking relationally is like what Terry Real the relationship psychologist talks about is like thinking about not about you, not about me, but thinking about the relationship, thinking Mm -hmm. about the community, thinking about the greater, you know, good for all, whether it's the, just the two of us or whether it's like the, all of us underneath whatever type of community umbrella, um, we live in. Right. Right. And that the more, and that's not, and it's kind of like, I guess you could say it's almost like a tribal, tribal way of thinking, but not, but tribal to me sounds very, um, like to like very small, like this is more about understanding that it's like, it's like the thing where it's like when you focus on the breath, the breath changes, you know, when you look at something that what you're looking at changes, you know, it's like, um, what is that idea of like, or like, or, or even that idea of like what you seek is seeking you. It's like just the shift of your awareness, Um, will change whatever it is that you're becoming aware of, you know? And so understanding that that's the effect that we have on other things and other people, and as well as we're also being affected by other things and other people, then knowing that it's like definitely not all about you at all. Like it's impossible for it to just be all about you, for us to just live in this isolated thing. And to think that we are is totally an illusion. And this is an illusion that that many of us are still struggling under and now it's showing up as like you know as different as different things as far as like intimacy problems you know as far as like relationship problems as far as like um you know people feeling isolated and alone um you know that whole like idea of solitary confinement is like that's like the worst punishment of all yeah yeah you know and to um and even just the idea of punishment in general as far as like being punitive you know it's like if you don't understand that like hurting somebody else or putting or or having malicious intentions to anything else is is in essentially just hurting Hurting yourself yourself. yeah you know so this is the going back to the idea of like why the self-love is so important because if you do not have that sense of love for yourself or respect or sense of worthiness for yourself then it's impossible to be able to offer that or even hold space for that or recognize that for somebody else and therefore other people and other communities so this is like it's all connected you know it's like we have to find that balance between um um, tapping into the love that we have for ourselves and cultivating that, knowing that doing that work is um, only going to help us connect to and love and see other people. Yeah. So that that goes along with like the balance of like prioritizing yourself and prioritizing others and like within like relationship. But also it goes along with the idea of um, doing your own work and healing, whatever that needs to be to get to yourself to a point where you can talk to yourself lovingly, look at yourself in the mirror lovingly, um, take yourself out 
out lovingly, like without feeling uncomfortable and without any issues. It's like once you can really get to that point, then you know that's what you can also offer and you know, somebody else and other people and et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. It's like it's just uh it's it's like one in the same. Yeah. You know, it's the outside and the inner, like it's all we're all connected, it's all blended. Yeah. Yeah. That's so beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but I just love that. I love yes. that idea. It's so inspiring. Yeah. Like the idea of like looking at things like really relationally. It's like, yes, I can have be my individual self and still um, have that self love and still have that uniqueness of me. But um, what it like ultimately, what is the most important thing? I mean, you do that for yourself to bring it into a relational context. Good. Yeah. And, you know, into yeah. the greater good. Exactly. Right. right. For some form of service. Some I feel form like. of service. Yeah. yeah right. Some form of like showing up in some way that's like connecting. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, uh, and so that's the priority. Like that's the, that's yeah. the end goal is the relational goal, yeah. right? It's like the, we do the self work to get to there. We don't yeah. do the self work just to like be like a healthy, healed individual, independent self. You oh, know? That feels like egoic I mean, still. I know. It's totally. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And then, um, cause that's not helping anybody when you're isolating and separating yourself. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's beautiful. Yay. That's way to bring it like all the way up and all, all the, the way, way back. Together. I love yes, it. We're, we're tying this all I know, together. I know. So I love it. So great. Thank you, Kumbi. Of course. Yes. Um, so Libra yes. challenge, relationship challenge, self love challenge. Um, I think that it's so important to do both. Yep. Yeah. yeah. What you do for yourself, you do for others. Yes. Right. Yes. What yeah. you cultivate for yourself, you will, even if you don't have the opportunity now, you will have the opportunity to be able to do that for others. Yep. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Great. Great. All right, everybody. Check this one out. Grab it on our website, heartbeat2go.com. And we will see you next month for our Scorpio challenge. Yay. Shadow work. Yay. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Bye, Thanks. Everybody. Bye.